Moika. Hey, welcome, welcome to, to our podcast, podcast Mastering Finland. Finland. I'm Jean and I'm from California. I'm Petra and I'm from the Czech Republic. We're here to chat about our life in Finland. Welcome to our first interview ever on our podcast. But it's just me because we decided with Jean that it's going to be a one or the other interviewing other people. Today I would like to welcome Katarina, my dear friend, and we met during our master's degree studies. Hi Katarina. Hi. How are you today? Good. I'm very glad to be here. Yeah, good to have you here. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. So, could you shortly introduce yourself? Sure. So, as you mentioned, my name is Katerina, and I am originally from Greece. I was born in Athens, so sort of like the big city, but I was raised in an island um, in the south, so lots of sea and sunshine. Nice. Um, yeah, so I studied philosophy, psychology, and pedagogy for my bachelor's mm-hmm. degree, and my major is in pedagogy, basically. So, yeah, that's pretty much yeah. me. <laughs> Good. And uh, I'm engaged to Alex, who is half Finn and half Greek. Yeah, which is really good to mention because the probably the first question will be what brought you or attracted you. But yeah, why Finland? Right. So basically, uh, we met during our studies in Athens. He's also from Rodos. And uh, well, he's half Finnish. And well, the financial situation in Greece and with the crisis yeah. going on, it's pretty tough to mm-hmm. survive there and start anything of your own. Like we couldn't even live together because the, yeah. the salaries and the living conditions mm-hmm. are pretty much not ideal. So we decided that maybe we could give it a shot and check out Finland and see how his second country of origin yeah. would yeah. treat us, if it would yeah, be better definitely. or anything like that. Because we hear so much about mm-hmm. Finland, also in Greece, like how great it is and how everything is pretty much organized yeah. and yeah. we can have a, a decent life here. So yeah, we thought we could give it give it a shot. So have you had any idea what is it going to be like? I don't know, has he visited before? So basically he was born in Greece. Mm-hmm. His mom is of Finnish origin yeah. and well he could speak Finnish fluently because we also have these Finnish schools in, in Rodos where yeah. it's like every Saturday Finnish kids would have the chance to practice their, yeah. their mother or father tongue mm-hmm. or whatever. So basically he graduated that school and he had some sort of connection with Finland maintained yeah. but I wouldn't say that they would visit Finland a mm-hmm. lot so mm-hmm. there wasn't like a strong yeah. bond yeah, yeah, yeah. with friends here or relatives yeah. or so on yeah. okay so what sort of things did you know about Finland before you moved I sort of fell in love with the place okay when we came uh, to visit for those couple of weeks yeah. it was amazing because it was summer it was down in the middle of July everything was green it was sunny so you would recommend people yes, to come to Finland please at least summer. once yeah. yeah it's a completely different experience yeah. and this is coming from a person who I grew up with the Greek summer you know the mm, sea the yeah, sun the warm yeah. it's a completely yeah. different experience and I loved it it mm. was beautiful so naturally we said you know oh this yeah. is so great yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like that all the time so <laughs> so yeah and then we really loved it and we were lucky enough because his parents already had an apartment that they were not renting out yeah to anyone but yeah. it would still work for us well that's amazing yeah mm-hmm. And so you didn't, up. yeah. So then you moved here. Yeah, originally it was Helsinki. Okay. Here in May two thousand sixteen. Okay. So it's already almost for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and um, we moved to that tiny little apartment, which was a blessing because rent here, mm-hmm. especially when you first move, yeah, they are. It's a big shock. Yeah. Especially if you're from Helsinki. Helsinki. Yeah. Helsinki yeah. It's one of, it's one of the most expensive yeah. cities in the world. Oh, don't be surprised. Yeah. But yeah. we were lucky to have it. Like, yeah, definitely. It was a really good pillow for us that we didn't have to sort yeah. of pay rent apart from everything else that came yeah. with moving here and yeah. having to deal with all new situations yeah, and sense. the struggles. So yeah. it was we had that going on for us. So how was the transition for you into the new life in Finland? Like, what was difficult? Were there easy parts? How do you remember it? To be honest, at first I was super excited. Mm-hmm. Like, I was... Sort of in this frenzy that everything would sort of work it out on its mm-hmm. own. And when we came here, I didn't really much care about all the struggles. Yeah. And because I thought that they would sort of magically disappear. Because we you maintain this idea when you first move here that mm-hmm. you know they're so well organized and that 
people yeah, care. Everything works. Everything and, yeah, will work out on yeah, its own. Yeah, yeah. But of course, that wasn't the case. <laughs> and as I slowly sank into reality, then, you know, all the struggles came yeah. along. Like, because especially when you first move here and you don't have a job, yeah. it can be pretty challenging with every single aspect of everyday yeah. life. Like, I couldn't Definitely. even get out this um, monthly ticket for public transport. Yeah. I had to pay the extra. Yeah amount that you have to pay when you can have that card because you don't have that social security number in the beginning and of course job wise it was really tough there was Mm -hmm. hardly anything because I didn't speak any Finnish of course of course yeah and we didn't really know anybody here so there were no connections Mm. and nobody who could help you and to be honest of course they have the social services like they told me so yeah that they will sort of like yeah which is the unemployment office just uh, yeah to say, yeah yeah that's the unemployment office but they won't be exactly helping you if you don't have that social the security old paperwork number. done that we talk about in the other episode exactly. with jim yeah mm-hmm. exactly you mentioned all already the social system so have you had a chance to experience it yourself yeah definitely i managed in the beginning to get a part-time job mm-hmm. as a cleaner which of course yeah. was sort of challenging in its own nature and the money was not enough because mm-hmm. part-time jobs here are good and everything, yeah. but they're not. They of do course, not suffice yeah. when you have to pay rent and everything and bills piling up. So in that case, once I got the part-time job and I had the much wanted a, a social yeah. security number, then I was also entitled to the benefits. Yeah, very much. Mm-hmm. Very popularly known as the yeah. social benefits of Finland. Yeah. And the problem was that since I had no prior working experience, mm-hmm. I wasn't entitled to the full on yeah. benefit. Yeah. So luckily, my degree from Greece, the bachelor's yeah. degree, was what gave me the chance to get the benefit at all. So yeah. it was this Työmarkkinatuki uh, okay. uh, benefit for people who have higher education yeah. degrees, but they do not. Good to know about uh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But they basically don't have any work yeah. experience. But that's also another problem in its yeah. nature because what about people who do not necessarily have higher education yeah. degrees? Then they're mm, sort of definitely. not entitled to anything. Yeah, and also I would like to mention that it has changed over the past definitely. four years. You know, even from my own experience, it's getting more and more difficult for foreigners to get the social benefits. Definitely. Okay, perfect. So. Quite a good topic, I think, when it comes to Finland. Everyone knows about the stereotypical parts of Finland. Mm-hmm. But how was it for you? Did you experience any culture shock or a very something different from fin- Finnish culture that is different compared to your culture? So two things pop into mm-hmm. mind when we talk about that. The first one would be the biggest shock. Uh, when we first came here to visit, we mm-hmm. visited my mother-in-law yeah. uh, in Joutsa. So it's like a, a little tiny village, sort of. Yeah, like, like central, middle Finland, central, central Finland. Central Finland, yeah. Finland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, they had the traditional sauna experience, mm-hmm. right? Where you, you burn the wood and then everybody yeah. goes and has a good time inside the sauna. And then we were talking about it and she started telling me that, you know what? Here in Finland, basically everyone goes to sauna naked. Classic. <laughs> And I was just like, what What exactly do you mean naked? So I was like, oh, you know, the whole family goes in naked, like mom, yeah, dad, kids, or even co-workers. Yeah. And they want to chill out, they might choose to have a sauna together and they're all just, you know, butt naked. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of like, I was just completely shocked thinking about that. I think everybody was. Yeah. But it's, okay. a, yeah. yeah. it's a natural part yeah. of, of their culture and what they think, yeah. you know, that yeah. is normal and healthy. Yeah. And to me, it's quite surprising because on daily basis, they seem so distant and they don't want to like have yeah. their space invaded and suddenly they sit in sauna <laughs> naked close to other people. How is that possible? And people who they might never yeah, know. Exactly. It's, and yeah. they're very okay with that. Yeah, well, like it's how such is a that huge th- contrast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is that even possible? Exactly. Yeah, that, that's a good. That's a definitely good example yeah. to say. <laughs> it, was, it was honestly a huge shame. Like, yeah, it was pretty. Okay, much. so what was the other thing then? You said two things. The other thing. So coming from, I don't know if if it's just specific to Greeks or yeah. if it's just southern countries. Mm-hmm. Coming from um from Greece, you should know that basically we are very very loud people. Not all of us. <laughs> Definitely, but we're sort of yeah. like people who use a lot of their mm-hmm. body language. Yeah, we gesture definitely. a lot wildly, mm-hmm. and then you know we don't exactly control yeah. our voice, especially mm-hmm. when we get excited about yeah. something. 
we might sound like we're fighting yeah. with somebody. So it, it was a shock for me when we first came here to mm-hmm. visit that everybody was sort of yeah. like quiet. Mm-hmm. And no calm. no drama anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No drama. And if you heard somebody shouting, That's it would be that, that there's yeah. something definitely wrong yeah. there. Yeah. So I would really try very, very hard to control my decibels. Like oh, I would generally walk yeah. down the street talking to Alex and people would be looking at us like, oh my God, she's... She's, she's crazy. That lady's crazy. She's just screaming in the middle of the street. And I was just, you know, talking about him like, oh, should we go this way or should we go that way? Yeah. And honestly, yeah. it sounded like I was fighting with him. Oh, my God. So after a while, I got into the, the routine of, like, trying yeah. to bring it down a bit. And yeah. I would get into the habit of asking him, like, is it too loud now? Should I... You know, if I'm if I'm too loud, just tell me, and I'll just bring it down a bit. I think you've done a great job. <laughs> you are not loud. I know, but now when I go yeah. back home, yeah. my mom is like, "Why are you so whispering? quiet? Why are you so quiet? I can't hear you." <laughs> well, then there is the other contrast of culture. But well, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that's amazing. Okay, so <laughs> the opposite question now: What do you appreciate about the Finnish culture? Is there anything that you really like? Yeah, definitely. I mean. I really love that they're so trustworthy people. Mm. Like when they say they're going to be doing something, that's it. Yeah. It's going to get done. Yeah. And you can count on that. Yeah. And this is something that where I come from, it's really rare. Mm-hmm. And I agree. to me, yeah. it's very precious because when you make a promise and you say that something is going to happen yeah. and then it takes mm-hmm. forever or you just sort of yeah. try to slither your way yeah. out of it then it makes it all more difficult for you. So when yeah. we first came here, it was such a relief to feel like everything yeah. is just going to happen exactly as they told me they're mm-hmm. going to happen. Mm-hmm. Of course, there are, there are cases that, you know, they might yeah. take longer or something yeah, might yeah, happen. Definitely. But in in most cases and like 90% yeah, of the time, agree. everything mm. is done correctly. So, yeah, and I appreciate that very, very much. And the fact that I also feel very safe in this country so yeah I love Greece and everything but having been born and I studied in Athens as mm-hmm. well and it's your, you're coming from a big city where everything is pretty much a danger mm-hmm. like you're not you're not able to work to walk yeah. alone on the streets at night yeah. and you're constantly advised to sort of take measures mm-hmm. to protect yourself mm-hmm. especially if you are a woman yeah so I it, definitely agree yeah. yeah and and then you always clutch your handbag yeah. to your chest because you, you know yeah. you're gonna get yeah, big definitely. Pop, big pop yeah. Yeah, yeah so when here it's mm. so much different like I've never felt this sense of danger yeah that I have to be mm. aware of when or where I am. Mm-hmm. So, but then at really... the same time, it makes me feel very vulnerable, to be honest. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I think about it because I don't have to think about it. And sometimes when I walk and it's like dark and there is nobody and there's just mm-hmm. like one person, weirdo walking behind me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, is this the time now when I should be careful and be aware, or is it all right? Yeah. And I think that's kind of like the bit that I am like not sure about because mm-hmm. you feel very safe. Mm-hmm. It's true. But is it gonna like? Is there any point when it's gonna just break? Yeah, it's gonna sneak yeah. up on you. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. then that's true. And have you? Exp- I think you might have experienced the same thing. Like when you go back home, and you know you come from this this environment of calmness yeah. and security, and you're back home where yeah. you know stuff happens. Yeah. I have to constantly remind myself, like, yeah. you know, you're not in Finland. Yeah, you're exactly. not in Finland. Take your back. What is in front of you? Yeah, you are not yourself. in Finland. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. Funny. Yeah, it's 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 funny, but that's yeah. definitely the point. Yeah. Okay, so now quite a tough question, I guess, but really important one because mm-hmm. we want to kind of get it all out. Ouch. And the question is, what do you struggle with in Finland? It can be whatever. It can be culture, finding work, social life or whatever else there is that was connected or is connected to your life right now. Right. Well, I think that one of the biggest struggles would be, apart from the weather conditions, that there's darkness yeah. throughout the year. Yeah. So basically we live and thrive in darkness. We're back to get bad. It was a struggle because, as I told you, I came from... I originally from a very sunny, yeah. sunny island, yeah. and it was a huge blow mm. when it was so dark and cold all the time. Mm-hmm. But I somehow sort of weighted the good and the bad, and this is something that yeah. you can live with. Yeah, like, exactly. Honestly, I know if you're not very fond of the cold, please reconsider coming here. <laughs> but um, in general, I think it's <laughs> something that it's worth it. Like you, yeah. you know that the Finns have this uh, sister 
that they that yeah. they keep mentioning. We haven't mentioned it yet, yeah. but great that you're mentioning it. It's yeah. this superpower way yeah. of like surviving everything and dealing with these yeah. worst things. Right, and pushing well. your limits yeah. and yeah. growing. It's a good test to you as definitely. well. So, definitely, definitely. Yeah. It can be, yeah, it can bring some feelings of depression. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, not just to us yeah. foreigners, but things as well. Yeah, definitely. It's a problem. And that's yeah. definitely why you should be cautious about experiencing your, maybe not first winter, because you'll be very excited about everything, but mm. the upcoming winters, because yeah. from my own experience, it's getting worse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I have to be more and more cautious about what I'm doing and how I'm targeting all this darkness and, and this great weather and that's everything true. like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. one of the one of the struggles and then it would mainly be the fact that Finland makes it really hard for foreigners to find some job opportunities yeah. that match their yeah. educational yeah. background or any any sort of yeah. background mm. at all if I'm yeah. being honest. Yeah, it's so, very sad. Yeah. It's it's very sad because I can tell most of us who stayed here after our degree, master's degree, mm-hmm. we have been struggling to find a job. And if exactly. we have found one, it was not particularly the thing that we wanted to do. Yeah, definitely. And it's unfortunate because the only foreigners that seem to get job are the foreigners that have technical background. Yeah, or finance. Yeah, or, or so, fine. Yeah. yeah. But like the tech it's the mm-hmm. most popular now. So if yeah. you're a tech person, you will most likely get jobs. You don't even need to speak the language. Yeah, that's just, the point. Yeah. But for the other, whatever mm-hmm. fields there are, mm-hmm. you need to do all the extra trainings, degree recognitions, and it costs money. And it costs, it's, and it's very exhausting, yeah. I have to say. Like when yeah. I went through the procedure of having yeah. my qualifications recognized it was really exhausting like mentally yeah. having to go through the whole thing so can we maybe like shortly mention it how mm-hmm. what did you have to do to go through the process just yeah, like definitely. summarizing so what you need to remember on that case if you're looking to get your degree or qualifications mm-hmm. recognized in finland uh, you need to contact these services called opetus mm-hmm. so this is the national board of education yeah Maybe you can provide Yeah, them. we will definitely yeah. provide links, all that kind of we mention. There are a lot of information on their sites, and they make it really easy for you to understand mm-hmm. the process. But you should keep in mind that it's a process that takes time. It might vary from one month to even three. So if you're thinking of moving here and just completely going straight for a profession that needs to get, that need yeah. to get your qualifications recognized, you need to do it prior Just so you're prepared and you don't have to spend much effort or time while you're also Mm. getting accustomed and used Mm -hmm. to the life here with all its troubles and everything. So I had to get everything, every single paper basically (laughs) from your my bachelor's degree and of course the master's degree Mm -hmm. here to get it translated if it wasn't Mm -hmm. and officially stamped. So you need to have the Translation, the official, yeah, 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 official yeah. translation, and then you get this stamp, the apostille stamp. Yeah, apostille stamp. That's the stamp. Yeah, that's the stamp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you need to have that one. Yeah. I had to have that one now yeah. also on my papers. And then you basically collect all the documents required, and you send it their way by mm-hmm. post. So emails will not yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, which makes the process even a bit longer. Yeah. Because if you're sending your papers from across the yeah. world, that's also. So how long did it take for you to get the papers back? Around a month, okay. and I'm living in Finland, yeah. so mm-hmm. it was it was pretty much yeah, easier for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So for somebody who wants to do it from yeah. I don't know across the world yeah. or outside European Union, you should yeah. definitely look up ahead on that. Yeah. So did you pay anything for that? Of course, yeah, and it's pretty expensive, and I didn't of quite course. get the uh, recognition that I wanted. Oh, so they recognized my degree, yeah. but they require me to do some extra training that matches their own. <laughs> Sort of like levels. Yeah, I know. I find that I'm sorry now if it's like strong opinion, but I find it ridiculous mm-hmm. because if you have a degree, if you have transcript of records that you've studied that and you've done that, exactly. even work experience is mentioned and so on, so on, so on, and it's still not enough. I mean, what would you want then from the people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, how is this not okay? I know, yeah. And it's pretty frustrating. That's why I mentioned the exhaustion part because when you're done, finally yeah. done with a procedure and they gave you a decision that you're not completely yeah. happy with yeah. which is most of the cases yeah. unless you're very specific yeah. on what you do and yeah. that that your you know your job field is much mm-hmm. 
uh, needed here. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it can be pretty, yeah, pretty disappointing. Like I was quite disappointed. Yes. So you said that there was the, they suggested some training. So mm-hmm. if you wanted to proceed for further, yeah. What do you have to do? You have to do the training. I have to do the training and then go through some sort of examination or write a bunch of okay. essays on some specific topics okay. that they will need me to. And then oh. after all that is completed, then you can get, you know, the official yeah. official qualification. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that you can actually work enough. in one yeah. of their schools. Yeah. So it's a pretty... It's tough. <laughs> it's a tough it's procedure. A, yeah. yeah, it's a tough. Okay, so let's speak about something... Uh, positive. Positive yes. and, and funnier. <laughs> so I know you've got a cat. I do. And could you tell us his name? <laughs> <laughs> so his name is Bjorn. He is so huge, by the way. He is not normal cat. No. He's Sorry, not. he's not normal. Yeah, I honestly think that there's something, like he has some sort of bloodline from... Genetic mutation. Yeah, genetic mutation. I don't know. That's true. That's true. Because he is huge. He's, he's huge. Massive. Yeah. He's like panther-like. Yeah. He's also black in yeah. color. So exactly. he's, um, yeah. He's so I wanted to ask you some questions related to that. Sure, because sure. some people might want to, you know, consider getting pets mm-hmm. and so on. So, did you bring him with you from Greece, or did you get him here? No, he's Finnish. He's so. Finnish. Okay. <laughs> he's from Porvo, actually. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you speak to him in Finnish, or English, or Greek? He's Greek. Okay. So. <laughs> he's Greek in Swirl, but Finnish. In, right. In, yeah, in yeah. passport. In, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So, he, yeah, he's more <laughs> Greek than Finnish, definitely. Nice. It was pretty easy uh, to, okay. to find a pet here. Yeah. I know that Finns usually, when they want to find a pet, they buy, like they buy mm-hmm. some sort of um, breed. Breed, yeah. So they, the Finns are very much obsessed yeah. with breeds, I'd yeah, say, yeah, especially yeah. when it comes to dogs. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. So they would usually pay a lot of money yeah. to get to get the breed. Mm-hmm. But Bjorn was actually not. Yeah. So, so some genetically yeah make sure make sure yeah. yeah so he w- we didn't have to pay a lot of money yeah. for him yeah. so we got into tori pistafi so in tori dot fee you can find all sorts of stuff yeah like there, that the people like. yeah second hand stuff second-hand yeah stuff, whatever yeah. and also pads and also cars and I know, uh, everything, like everything, everything basically everything, yeah or even if you're looking for some service, like yeah, yeah, um, that's if true. You're moving yeah. and you're looking for somebody to yeah, help yeah, you, yeah. you can hire yeah. people from there. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, so we we actually found him from there. Okay. And uh, we had to pay like eighty euros for him. Oh. But the eighty euros was were basically for his vaccination. Yeah. So yeah. basically, we got him from free, mm-hmm. and he was already vaccinated. And okay, so he was already vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. everything was. So he was, was ready done, to go. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so it was nice. pretty easy for us. Yeah, good. So have you had any, like, I don't know, has he had ever any issues that you had to go to doctors or are there any, like, annual checkups or some yeah, sort definitely. of stuff like that? Yeah, so they need to have an annual checkup. Oh, I mean, I think it's by law that yeah. pets should be yeah, yeah. cared for at least yeah. once a year by yeah. a doctor and to make sure that their vaccinations are in order mm-hmm. or that they have, you know, the, the appropriate papers in yeah. case you need to travel. Yeah. If you're planning on traveling with your pet, yeah. then you need to have it chipped yeah. like you need to have an yeah. electronic chip yeah. so there's a specific yeah. identity and mm-hmm. otherwise your airlines will not accept yeah. Yeah. your pet and to make sure that all your vaccinations are in order and then in Bjorn's case because he's a male we had him castrated okay so that means that we actually had to go through a proper procedure yeah. which was yeah. they made it really easy for was us it? yeah, yeah. That's I mean, good. and it wasn't that expensive actually mm-hmm. I thought it would be worse but it was actually very very easy and cheap yeah in that's good yeah. that's good yeah mm. so pets are anchored that's quite nice to hear i mean they love them so much yeah. here and you know i grew up with cats i think it makes and, sense because yeah. like here you get sort of this like sense of loneliness sometimes mm. in this darkness sure. so especially for people who maybe live alone yeah it's this way of like not feeling lonely and you Definitely. have some like company plus yeah. it's an incentive i'd say like because the month here can get pretty dark yeah. and gloomy, yeah. and you might just want to cozy up in yeah. the apartment and never get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> having a dog, yeah. not a cat so much, but having a dog yeah. can really because yeah. it pushes you, yeah, pushes yeah. you to go to go out. Yeah, because you, need you to have walk to. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's why I am considering on getting a dog. Mm. I love dogs, and we are moving into this new apartment, and yeah. and we have pets allowed, and it's a huge apartment now. Well, huge, not huge, but like way bigger than this yeah. apartment now, yeah. and so I am like genuinely so into this idea. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, I have I'm trying to still like go through this. Like, what is it going to be like? 
what if we need to travel? How yeah, are we traveling gonna, is, a, yeah. is a struggle. So how do you do that? Are you taking Bjorn with you or do you have anybody who babysits? babysits yeah, well, basically, we don't really get to get Bjorn yeah. with us a lot because he hates traveling. Like, he even hates traveling by car. So yeah. airplane yeah. would be a lot of, um, yeah. well, other issue over there. But, um, yeah, we usually find someone to babysit him. So... <laughs> you have experienced the place. I did it. I did it once, <laughs> and I don't like cats. So you can see how yeah. great friend I am. She loves me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so sure. I was genuinely willing to do this for yeah. her. So I know. Just yeah. And we were very grateful. And I think Bjorn really misses on Petra, but Petra doesn't. Oh, it's so funny. Petra I always like come, him. and I'm like, "Hello, you're touch him." He's like, "Oh, hello." Yeah. And he's just so close to me. And yeah, he, he loves, loves you. Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, hello. Just yeah, give just, this to Yeah. It's fine. Keep away from me. Yeah. Yeah." yeah. 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 So we have this like great love hate relationship. Love-hate relationship. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, so there's one more thing I wanted to ask about the pet. Uh, do you have any insurance for Bjorn? Well, not really. I know that people do yeah. that, go through yeah. that actually, that they may insure their pets in case mm-hmm. something is up. Yeah. And I think it's a wise thing to do, especially when it comes to dogs. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking because mm-hmm. he's mostly inside and everything. Yeah, yeah, he's, um, but if you have a dog and like you're going out and something happens. Yeah, you need some yeah. sort of surgery yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have yeah. it definitely. definitely. So, okay, so one last big topic that I would want to cover because I right. know you have a car and yeah. we spoke about it, but the thing is that you brought your car from Greece with you. I did. So, and we talked about it, that it was not easy thing to do, really. No, actually. So, no. could you tell us a bit more about how you did it and how, what did you have to go through and did you pay and, like, what is it, the whole <laughs> process like? Yeah, so it's a really, like, especially in the beginning when you decide or even think to do that, then it can seem like a really, really complicated um, thing to go yeah. through, like a big, very long mm-hmm. procedure. But uh, fortunately, Alex, being half Finnish, he was able to translate most yeah. of the directions that yeah. we needed to follow. But then we figured out that these directions and how to do it exactly, uh, they're also available in English. So okay. if you go on Good. to the different sites yeah. that we will share can, definitely yeah. the links that yeah, I can provide you yeah, with yeah, the yeah, links yeah. definitely. And then you can check those um, those out. And it's quite easy and quite specific. Yeah. And once you get the hang of it and once you find the edge of the thread, then it sort of becomes quite easy. Yeah. So basically, when we decided to move the car from mm-hmm. Greece, we had to travel through uh, Eastern Europe. Mm-hmm. And that was a really long road trip that took <laughs> like a, a week and a half, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, and it was really fun. I wish we had more time to enjoy yeah, the, the different sense. cities. Uh, but the planning part of the whole thing, it's really important. So mm-hmm. I would advise anybody who thinks of, about doing it to take it slow and easy mm-hmm. and not stress about all the things that need yeah. to be done because basically it didn't take a long time to go through yeah. the procedure yeah. but there were a lot of stuff that we need to make sure that they yeah. were done properly mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. to the point so um first you need to figure out if you do not have an eu driving license mm-hmm. you should check how you can proceed with that like how Uh, your current driving license would be accepted in the Mm -hmm. different European or non-European countries that you plan on driving Mm -hmm. through if you want to go to to reach Finland by car. And uh, in that case, you might need uh, a special permit or an international driving license. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so basically... I had to transfer because the car was in, on my dad's name and I mm-hmm. transferred it to my name yeah. officially. And then we kept the existing car insurance until we would reach Finland. Okay. So you yeah. need to have the traveling insurance yeah. when, when you're traveling through yeah. Europe. Yeah. And you need to make sure that your insurance covers the European yeah. countries that mm-hmm. you want to travel yeah. to. Um, my advice is to check the countries that you can drive through without mm-hmm. having to have a special permit or if you need yeah. to pay extra money yeah. for it. Yeah. So make a plan and check what sort of regulations mm-hmm. they have with EU if yeah. you're coming from an EU country to yeah. an EU yeah. to another EU country or vice yeah. versa. We didn't have much trouble going through the borders. So yeah. it was pretty much easy. It's quite easy nowadays, I think. Yeah. yeah. Except for yeah. I think Serbia. So when we were we were entering yeah. Serbia, which is not an yeah. EU country, yeah. and when we were leaving Serbia, we yeah. got searched yeah. multiple times and yeah. Yeah, it, it was I mean it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So then 
an important thing to remember is that when it comes to Finland and getting the procedure started on how to register your mm-hmm. car in Finland, actually bring it here and being able to use it, is that you have a limit of three months okay. from the time that you enter Finland yeah. until the time you get it yeah. registered. Yeah. So you have three, three months to yeah. be sort of driving yeah. around. And so basically these three months are sort of similar to ones that before you have to register yourself as a person exactly. as well. <laughs> That's yeah. quite nice yeah. to know. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it's the same thing with yeah, the cars. Yeah, yeah. So, but when you actually want to get your paperwork done, then you should vi- visit vero.fi. Yeah. So this is the tax site. Yeah. That we mentioned it the also in other yeah. podcast, and yeah. definitely will provide the links. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, and um, yeah, yeah. And then you can find the declaration of use form, and you can submit it before actually driving the car to Finland, okay. so that they know you're coming yeah. and you know that you yeah. have everything in order. Yeah. So after that, then you can find also on the same site the form that you can file about the car tax. Mm-hmm. And that's a very important form because they need to make a decision about how much tax how much you, you have to, to pay, pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, compared to your country. Yeah. So um, the tax is basically 20% of the car's value in taxes. Okay. So, so they will assess mm-hmm. what is your yeah, makes your car's value yeah, and then you're going to pay. Based on like year and yeah. everything. Yeah. And the emissions and yeah, so yeah, on. Yeah. And then they will sort of yeah. Yeah, evaluate it. And yeah, you, so it's like one-time payment. One-time payment, okay. basically. Yeah. yeah, and then you you pay for that. Yeah. You make sure that you pay it right mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. And once uh, you reach the country, then you can take the car within that time limit that we discussed, yeah. the three months time limit. You can take the car up for inspection. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of inspection yeah. points through all over mm-hmm. Finland. Yeah. It's called Katsastus yeah. in Finnish. So you can go to one of those places. Yeah. And then they will also help you to register it into the yeah, country. Yeah, so then you get the register. Yeah, so once everything is complete and that yeah. they've gone through the procedures and they see that yeah. everything is in order and you've paid your tax mm-hmm. decision and so on, then when everything is complete, you will receive the new car yeah. plates okay. at nice. the inspection office. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and finally, a good tip, don't forget to insure your vehicle, especially yeah. if... You've never driven in snow or oh, ice? Yes, please, because it's yeah. for everybody. And I've driven before and I also had like a <laughs> tiny bit of an, like a little accident, just slipped off of the road. And yeah. it's just a second because it's mm. in winter, it can get really slippery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, but don't be afraid. I think everyone can manage. You managed as well. Mm, yeah, definitely. And, and I was pretty much terrified. Yeah. To do she was so scared and she was just amazing. <laughs> I don't know how she did it, but it was just like from zero to hundred. And she was just driving in the snow in oh, minus yeah. 30. It was scary. It was really good. I was definitely <laughs> terrified at that point. But, but yeah, you did great. You did yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get used to it. It's such a good thing that you insure your car for those yeah. sort of circumstances because yeah, it can happen to anybody even Finnish people and no matter how much you've driven or you're confident about driving yeah. on ice it, it just you know these yeah. things happen and yeah, you definitely. can't predict them always definitely great hey last question sort of like this <laughs> knowing what you know now what would you tell your past self what advice would you give yourself mm. before like coming here and you faced all these different yeah. things and situations so what would you tell yourself if you could well now this May upcoming May I will have lived here for four years and I've throughout the years I've always made that a question to myself like I had this question mm-hmm. that, you know did you regret it would you do it again if you knew what you know now yeah. and then I know that it can get pretty tough and that you can struggle a lot with different situations and your definitely. own self. But um, I would definitely do it again. I did That's not. Good. I do not regret it. And it changed me in so many ways mm. that it made me grow. It made me stronger. I made some amazing people, and you know, I love. I love being around them, and I had some great support from people who I didn't even expect I would have in my life after a bunch of time have passed. But yeah, I would just do it all over again. That's great. Just the one tip that I would give my yeah. little naive uh, <laughs> 23-year-old yeah. self would be that um, just don't get your excitement and your enthusiasm get the best mm. of you. Just be a little bit more grounded. Don't expect that everything would just magically be handed over to you just because, you yeah. know, there's this myth surrounding yeah. Finland and how it can be sort of like a promised land uh, situation yeah. going on. So. Sometimes sounds like that in all the news, really. Mm. The happiest country in the world and mm. so on. Mm. And then the reality is a bit 
It's a bit different. Yeah, but I mm. guess it's normal, right? It's normal. And Every I don't want to sound depressing, yeah. definitely not. <laughs> it's just that with wherever you move, keep your enthusiasm and keep definitely. that light, that fire going. It, you're going to yeah. need it, definitely. But just be grounded and yeah. realize that everything needs hard work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And eventually you're going to make it through. Yeah, and don't give up. And don't give up, exactly. Because it can <laughs> it's pretty challenging. That's what it's all about. That's mm. this mastering Finland thing. That's what we are all trying to do here. Exactly. And it it's, can be, yeah. yeah, it can be pretty amazing, yeah. honestly. Like, I know I, we talk about the darkness a lot, but if there were, if there was no darkness, then we wouldn't be able to appreciate yeah. the light. Yeah, exactly. So. It just, it's like amazing when the sun is out and you're like, Oh, sun, mm. just give me five minutes. It's amazing because you face. get to ex- yeah. experience it in a whole new yeah, exactly. other level. So, yeah, yeah, don't give up. That's Katarina's advice. Yeah, and don't give up. And, we are all in this together. I know that yeah. Finland needs you, even yeah. if Finland might not realize it right now. <laughs> Definitely, that's true. Finland needs you and you have a lot to give yeah. and just, you know, just keep yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for having me. It was a pleasure me. to have you. I know. I really loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> thank you for sharing all the great advices through all the pets <laughs> thing and cars. And thank you for listening to yeah. my blabbering. <laughs> also, one tip about Greeks, we talk a lot. Like, you need to stop us. That's why we <laughs> love each other, because we are talking a lot so we could talk for hours. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much for listening and have a nice day and see you next Monday. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys.